Hello everyone, we are back with more Seduce Me. Uh, I am Lulu and I am still playing this game even though I think all of the anime boys are ugly. Um, but I did look up, um, there are gay options and uh, the two best friends are two of the options. So I think I will see about going through at least one route. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna really watch this, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm not here for- <laughs> I'm not doing this for anyone. I'm just kind of doing it because it's fun and it keeps my mind off of my existential dread. Um, so let's just go ahead and load, um, let's go ahead and load this up. Um, this is where we stopped. Okay. So, I believe last time we found the anime boys. They were all half dead in our foyer. Foyer? In the entryway of our new mansion that our dead grandpa gave us. Um, and two of them stole our sexual energy and now we are... we passed out, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling any of these boys. I'm gonna tell you that right now. None of them are very, very nice. <clears throat> However, I began to feel the smooth silk around me and my eyelids unwillingly opened. Oh, also I want to make a note that I have not gotten the uh, achievement for completing the prologue yet, so we are still in the prologue. <laughs> Where? I awoke to find myself in an unfamiliar place. Where was mom? Dad? I was pretty sure this wasn't my room. Oh, wait. I lived at my grandfather's house now. Of course it would be unfamiliar. I rubbed my eyes and surveyed my surroundings. I was still in the clothes I arrived at the house in, but I was laying in a silk-covered bed. I remembered coming in the afternoon, so why was it nighttime already? Suppressing a yawn, I stretched my arms. Maybe I should order some food for delivery. I was feeling pretty hungry. I was about to sit up, but I suddenly realized that I wasn't alone. You're awake. Oh god, he looks like he's from a boy band. He's honestly, he has the most boring design of all of them. I'm gonna say that now. I don't like any of their designs, but he is just, there's nothing interesting about him. Huh? Gah! Since when was he standing there? And who the heck was he? A guy in my bedroom. Did we? There's no way! Hmm. Sorry, I think I was saying my doubts aloud. Why was I apologizing? To a stranger who's only said two words since I woke up? Wait, he looked eerily familiar. Did I just forget what happened? Okay, then it all came back to me. Incubus. He was an incubus. He and his brothers came here for refuge, and two of them kissed me, and then I fainted. And that was how things came to this. Oh! <sighs> He was leaning against the far wall, looking at me. My heart began to race as I thought of the endless list of possibilities the situation brought me. I hated the thought of being under an incubus's power, especially in a bedroom. I think the best- okay, so I can jump up and protect myself, or be calm. He hasn't- so far, this dude has not given me reason to be wary of him. He seems kind of quiet, so I'm gonna just stay calm for now. I took a deep breath. I was sure if that any of them wanted to take advantage of me, they would have already. Yeah, I'm awake now. That's good. That was a... I think that was good. I think I did a good thing there. I saw a small form of a smile on his face, which made me blush a bit. He's not pretty. I'm not blushing. Why, though? One thing still concerned me, though. I'm not going to use my powers on you. H huh How? I can read minds. It's an ability I was born with. Each of us has a different ability Don't like that. outside of our usual mind-altering powers. Don't like that. Great. Even more surprises. I grew even more worried about the situation I was in. I see. How long have I been asleep? For a few hours. <laughs> it's already gotten quite dark outside. Ah, uh, well, where are the others? My brothers are downstairs, cleaning up the blood from the lobby floor. <laughs> and making you dinner as an apology. Oh, okay. That's unexpectedly sweet. Oh, it's the least we can do. 
after invading your home and two of us using our powers on yeah, you. Yeah, you better make up for that, bitch. You've got a point. Right, I had forgotten about that. It still irked me that they had practically taken advantage of me at that point. Even if they were demons, it was pretty rude to demonstrate their powers by kissing me. I wasn't some kind of human plaything. All of this seemed pretty unreal. It was like something out of those romance novels that Naomi sometimes read. I wish I could just have went back to sleep and forgotten about all this. Maybe I should have just called the police on them. Then I would have never landed myself in this situation. Uh, do you feel well enough to get out of bed? Yeah, I think so. Whoa! <laughs> Trust me. I won't let you go. Please, let me go. I don't... don't touch me. Uh, I'm not so sure about this. I promise. That's not the problem. I'm not- I'm not worried about you dropping me. I don't- I just want you to not touch me. Uh, okay. I trust you. No, I don't. Good. I was speechless. He was carrying me as if I weighed nothing. He was so strong. Thank you. It- oh, yeah, I forgot. It's alright. I'm used to it. I decided to close my mouth for the time being so that I wouldn't weird him out or make things more awkward than they already were. Well, he didn't seem to mind carrying me or listening to me talk, so at least things weren't too strange. Damien seemed very quiet and calm about everything, especially with the situation we were in. However, there was a sort of longing in his eyes when he looked at me that wasn't lustful. It was more in admiration? Once we reached the lobby, I decided I felt well enough to walk on my own. As strong as he was, it, it was like he was carrying nothing. I didn't want to make him carry me everywhere. Yeah, that would be mortifying. Thanks for carrying me, but I think I can walk by myself now. Not saying that I didn't like it. I mean, I liked it. Not in a weird way, of course. It's not like I get carried around all the time. What I'm trying to say is that it was really nice of you to do that. I started to fumble over my words again. Real smooth. It's no problem. I'll be heading to the dining room then. Uh, all right, see you. He gently lowered me to the ground before he walked off quietly, disappearing into the shadows of the dark lobby. Okay, so far, if I have to pick one of the main five, which I'm not, I'm not, I'm already in my head, I've already kind of decided I'm going to gun straight for Naomi. <laughs> um, but if I had to pick from one of the five, so far he is, he's boring, but he seems kind of sweet, so I'm into that. Oh, hi! I, I don't know how to feel about you yet. Suddenly, a boy who looked around my age, or possibly younger, bounced up to me. He looked vaguely familiar. Oh, wait. Ah, you're Matthew, right? Mm-hmm, that's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. And this is the Genki one. I'm fine. Really? Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, I'm fine. I'm sure of it. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. Oh, they did. They did. I will be- I will be murdering them. Eventually, I will be murdering them. I hope you know that. It's okay. After all, I did hit Sam after what he did, and about Eric, I just wanted you guys to prove to me what you were saying. I suppose Incubi are... real, then. I wondered how exactly I got myself into this mess. First my grandfather, then a fight with my father, blowing up at Lizette, and now this? I certainly had a knack for getting myself into sticky situations. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea! He shoved his hands into his pockets with a cheery grin on his face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! What is that? What is that? It's a fucking squirrel with a knife. Um, what is that exactly? He smiled as if to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face froze in shock. Wait a second. What did I just make? This, this is... What he produced from his pocket was a creepy-looking doll. Ah, what is that? I... I'm not sure. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. 
His face paled considerably, and he dropped it onto the floor, scooting away from it frantically. Get it away from me! You might be possessed by a demon or something! You are a demon. But isn't he a demon himself? That's not what I wanted to make! I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like Fun it comes straight music. out of a horror movie. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to look so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. I don't want it. You can have it. What? I appreciate <laughs> the thought, but, uh, no thanks. I'm not romancing you. I don't care. That's too bad. Are you sure? I picked up the doll and waved it around him. It was funny teasing him. Gah! Help! It's gonna kill me! <laughs> alright, alright, I'll stop. Uh, anyway, I'm heading back to help out with the food. You can come over if you're hungry. Hmm, I think I'll go with you then. Alright, I didn't get the little, like, ba bump thing in the corner here, so I'm pretty sure I did the wrong thing for his, like, hearts thing. But I wasn't keeping that. I wasn't doing that to save his his feelings. I don't care about him. Mmm, <laughs> something smells good. My stomach fumbled in agreement. I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. Oh, fuck you. Excuse you. I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Oh, I... You will die in seven days. <laughs> Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. I'm okay with you. You're fine right now. Shh. Whatever. You're, you're safe for now, James. I apologize for his attitude. You're not pretty, really. I thought you were pretty to start, but you're not pretty. But you're, you're fine. You can live. Uh, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. I don't know if I trust the meal. For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was the doll getting to my head and distracting me. Ah, that's right. Damien and Matthew mentioned that they were making dinner as an apology. Okay, I am really... Protagonist Chan, really airheaded. Just gonna say that. Uh, oh, wait, you didn't have to. We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. All right, well, thank you. Matthew put down the last plates on the table and bowed a bit exaggerated, exaggeratedly to me, gesturing to the table with a sweeping motion. Ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table was filled with various foods from a eclectic selection of cuisines. One portion of the table was filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and another portion some yummy-looking desserts. And there were yet more and more plates that I could have possibly imagined. Whoa! That's a lot of food! And it all looks so good! We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. You will die in two days. You don't even get the full seven. <laughs> what Sweet? Me? That's enough, Eric. I will. You thought this was gonna be a dating sim. It's actually a murder sim, and it's gonna be me systematically killing Eric and then Sam. <laughs> You're no fun, James. I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. Do I, do I want to? I, my timer keeps turning off. Okay, we're 14 minutes in. I didn't know what came over me, whether it was his politeness or maybe his power, but I couldn't help but take his offered arm. It looks okay. Kind of like a less sexy ragey. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that set him apart from his brothers, not to mention he didn't really seem to hold much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask, why do you live alone? Oof, 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 red flag, red flag, red flag. Oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. Fine, I'll tell you. To put it briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Thanks. This house is really big. I don't even think... I don't think I even explored the entirety of the estate when I was a child. You lived here before? No. Truth be told, this is my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was younger. Okay. Normally... I would not tell these people anything about myself, um, 
And I would suggest that if you are in a strange situation like this, don't tell the strange men anything about yourself. But in the interests of storytelling, I'm going to continue to tell the strange men more about myself to keep the plot moving. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? He actually passed away yesterday. It was bequeathed to me in his will, and I was sent to live here, whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. It's not that I don't like this house, or that I don't have fond memories of being here. It's just the implications that come with staying at this estate. It's kind of complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? Okay. So, Matthew's the only one I think I've fucked up with so far, but that's okay, because I don't give a shit about Matthew. I certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way. It was different from what I had heard the entire day at school. I appreciated the fact that he was willing to listen. He's also a stranger. He's also a total stranger. I feel angry, sad, scared, and confused. It's hard picking out the different emotions that I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. I don't even know you. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. Thank you. Uh, are you all right? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. Oh, God. He caught me off guard with that comment. I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Uh, oh, I'm fine. He stopped and leaned in close. A bit too close for comfort. Or maybe it was just me. Inspecting my face. He was really quite tall, having to bend over so much to just look me, me straight in the face. Okay, I'm really starting to wonder if this little bum bump is a good thing or a bad thing. I genuinely don't know. I'm assuming it's a good thing. It was hard to look at him, especially when he was so close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking again. Hmm. Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. That's really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat, then. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Oh, uh... Eric was very charming, and his smile pulled at my heart. Pulled at my heart to murder hit, to stab his heart. The way he kept flirting with me definitely designated him as the charmer of the demons, yet there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. I'm gonna kill you, and I'm going to wave your decapitated stick head on a stick in front of your weeping mother. <sighs> I've never even seen Parks and Rec. Um, anyways, I hate this man specifically because he is terrible yeah that's it here okay this is probably this is the character one of my favorite all-time stories of all time is um my next life is a villainous and this is the character that keith was supposed to be before he developed a sister complex for katarina and that's why i hate him because he's not my sweet keith and i want keith i want to play why, can't, why am i not playing fortune lover why isn't fortune lover a real game Oh, yeah, when I didn't believe that they were incubi. It, it's fine, I guess. I mean, you didn't just get up and grab a kiss for no reason. I'm, I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> Sam can go fuck himself. Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my ear. I won't lie, though. I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. You will die. Thir your, li your motherfucking life will end 30 minutes from now. I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. Do I get a choice here? <sighs> He'd probably laugh at me if I smacked him and just be like, ooh, kitty has claws. And that would just be more annoying than ever. So I'm going to be play it cool so that no one suspects me when I eventually murder him. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. See? See? Now they will never suspect. They will never suspect. When he turns up dead, they will never know it was me. Well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment, he looked away, losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with a new, teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? 
There's going to be a lot less of you when I'm done with you. I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. I felt my face heat up simply from his words. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. I... Okay, I'm going to stop making jokes about how I'm going to murder him, because it's going to get really boring after a while. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. I made, o I made almost all... I made almost all of the dishes myself. Can I have, like... Oh, I can just hit this button. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression, as if he was betrayed. His face insta changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Oh, shut up, grammar Nazi. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. I, I I shouldn't I shouldn't make grammar Nazi joke. Nazis are not funny, but um no I don't like people who do that. That's rude and p pretentious. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Oh my god, I did not want to see family drama today. Ha 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 ha. Is this, a, is this like supposed to be a... Uh, is this supposed to be a good laugh or an awkward laugh? I really couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like in a way he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, it's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Not a lady. Not a lady. Maybe, maybe this character is a lady, but I'm not a lady. Eric, knock it off! I'm sorry I flubbed your heart event, your heart flag, Matthew. You're nicer than Eric. In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had this big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. Thank you. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. If they're gonna live with me, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> by the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Ah, I'm Lulu. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once, they looked at me. I don't know why, but having them all look at me felt like... Kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house is perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So you're all better now, right? Yup. All thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. 
Not me. I have never been horny once in my entire life. <laughs> never been horny. Will never be horny. I'm lying, actually. I'm asexual, but I have definitely been horny. Uh, <laughs> TMI. Um, I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power, it was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. Please let me- please tell me that there's like an option where I can just be like, um, that they'll be like, hey, can we live here? And please tell me there's an option where I can say hell no and that just ends the game. All right, um, actually we are at 26 minutes, so I'm gonna call it right here for now. I'm gonna save, um, I'm gonna save. So we've got another save point. Um, and I'll probably keep recording a little bit, but um, that'll be it for this episode. So uh, thank you all for watching. Um, if the few of you who I'm sure are only a couple of you are watching, if you're enjoying yourself, please let me know. Um, which of these milk toast boys would you romance uh let me know in the comments and um yeah i will see y'all next time